Hey guys, welcome back. So as you can see, this is a PlayStation video. So a bit sort of a bit different for me. Uh, reason being, I, as I said before, I was going to make a PlayStation area in my game room, which is still the plan. Uh, the game room is currently under review. I'm sort of uh, in planning stage at the moment because I'm about to tear this whole room apart and start from scratch and rebuild it all. And of course, I'm in the process of rebuilding my collection as well because I've, <laughs> I've hardly got anything left, so I'm just starting over really. Complete clean slate. So I had a PS3 and a PS4, but I didn't have PS1 and PS2. Uh, I had a loose PS1, which is American, but quite frankly, I just can't be bothered to import games for it. And I prefer the PAL boxes as well for the games. They just look nicer. So I figured, what the hell, I'm going to go PAL. So I spent about two weeks on eBay trying to get a decent boxed PlayStation, which I thought would be the most easiest thing to find. I thought it would be dead simple. There's thousands of PlayStations out there. You see them all the time at car boots. Unfortunately, on eBay, the majority of them are loose consoles. There really aren't that many box consoles listed, and I was really surprised. And the problem I was having is condition, finding a decent box that wasn't battered, finding the one that had the polys intact or had all the inserts, one that had a console in good condition. It was really difficult. But I, I persevered, I waited two weeks, and then last week, this one came up for £20. By now, I had to snatch it, and I'm so glad I did because it's in fantastic condition. And it's a 9002 model. And just look at the condition of the box. I don't know, I assume this is from a personal collection, or not from a collection, maybe someone just had it in their house, because it's just such nice condition all the way around. It's absolutely fantastic. And it is fully complete as well. It comes with uh, intact polystyrene that holds the console. It's even got that foam material that they wrap consoles in when you first buy them, as well as a banked instruction manual, the controller, all of the cables, everything is absolutely pristine. 20 quid, I was really happy and I'm so glad I waited for it. And a big bonus as well is it's a chipped console, which wasn't advertised as a chipped console, because obviously eBay is a bit iffy with all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I checked my American games on it, all of them load, no problem at all, straight in, full screen, full speed, awesome. So even though I'm not going to be buying American games, if there are any American and Japanese exclusives that look interesting, I can always import them anyway, play them on this bad boy. So yeah, so I'm really happy to have this. And I wanted one with a really nice box as well because obviously I am planning when I create the game room again to have the PlayStation area and I want to have all the four boxes on display. So I wanted to get a PlayStation 1 and 2 with decent boxes. Very happy with this. It's absolutely superb. So yeah, great stuff. I won't take it out because be <laughs> a lot of messing around. But yeah, it's in really nice shape. I have bought some games for the system as well because I want to and I've got to because PlayStation is just... It really is such a nostalgic system for myself. I mean, 95 when it came out, I would have been 17, 18, depending on the time of year. So, you know, I was right into my teenage years at that point, and I've got a lot of fond memories of playing PlayStation. I played so many games back then, and it just, yeah, some really, really great memories. So, the other day when I played one of the games that I've got to show you in a minute, which was uh, Tony Hawk's 2. Man, the nostalgia I got from that game is unbelievable. The soundtrack, it just took me right back to that time, and it's just like, wow. I just love the sound, the Papa Roach soundtrack in particular. And, you know, and it's just, yeah, it's just sort of about it. I love the early Tony Hawk games, they're absolutely fantastic, and it still plays exceptionally well as well. The controls are really tight, really fun game, but yeah, I just love PlayStation. PlayStation is second to Nintendo, really. I mean, it's just absolutely superb. So, yeah, so I thought I'd get that, really happy with that. That's one down, one to go. And, of course, I've got some games to show you, so what I'll do is I'll show you those now. And, uh, yeah, I haven't picked up a lot, but I've picked up a few gems, so hopefully you'll enjoy that, guys. So I'll just see, show you what I've got now. Okay, guys, so here we go. So this is the PS1 games I've got. I haven't got a whole lot, just a few really good titles, titles I really wanted to get hold of. So the first one that I picked up when I first ordered the console was one I've never played and I really wanted to get my hands on because I was really intrigued to see how this plays on PlayStation as well. And it's one of my favourite games of all time as well. So it is R-Types. So if you don't know, you get R-Type 1 and R-Type 2 on this. R-Type 1 is a really nice port, really handles well. Good level of difficulty, a lot of fun, beautiful graphics. R-Type 2, I've got to be honest, it's ridiculously difficult. I can't even get off the first stage. I've managed to get to the boss, but it just keeps killing me. It is so hard. I mean, R-Type 2, if you've played Super R-Type on the Super Nintendo, that is a version of R-Type 2. And for me, that is a lot more accessible. I can get to stage three on that, no problem at all. And then it starts getting a bit tough. 
But this version, <laughs> I just can't do stage one. It's ridiculous. I don't know what it is. It just seems very twitchy and intense. But I'm going to stick at it and try and do it. Because it's a really great game with a fantastic soundtrack. I mean, the first game is just an absolutely iconic title. One of my favourite shooters of all time. Love it to bits. So yeah, so there's our types Had to get that for the collection. Okay, then I bought some... What did I get next? Let me just check if I got this right. Yeah, that was right. I ordered some games off one seller on eBay. Uh, who was an absolutely fantastic seller, by the way. He really did hook me up nicely. Give me a fantastic price as well. And uh, packaging was super. I was really happy with this guy. So, obviously, the first game I got from him I spoke about earlier, which is Tony Hawk's 2. The game's in really nice condition as well. Uh, no cracks on the cases, thank God. That's the big issue with PlayStation, but there you go. I love this game. Definitely my favourite of the Tony Hawk franchise. The first three games are the best games, in my opinion. I think from number four onwards, it started losing the, it losing its way a little bit. And it got away from the traditional Tony Hawk style. I like the arena style a lot. I like being able to collect the money, get the high scores, collect skate, find the mystery tape, all that kind of thing. Back when these games came out, I spent so many hours. I mean, it was ridiculous the amount of hours I put into Tony Hawk's 1 and 2. And then Tony Hawk 3 came out. And I didn't even know until a couple of years ago that 3 and 4 were on the PS1. I was quite surprised to find that out. I've got to be honest, I don't think they're that particularly good on the PS1. Uh, they look a bit ropey. I mean, but then that's probably jaded by the fact that when number 3 came out, I was playing it on Xbox, which is like a humongous step up. And I absolutely love number 3. Number 3 is my second favourite. It's a fantastic title. First one's still a solid game. But I'll probably go 3 2 um, two, three, one in terms of quality. Uh, number 2 is just awesome because it's got the most amazing soundtrack. Uh, I love the uh, the hangar at the beginning, the hangar level, really, really solid. It's just a really fun game, and it's just, you know, I miss games like this. It's classic video game style, fantastic title. Okay, next one. So, I've only ever played this a few times in the past, I've never given it a proper go yet. Uh, it's called Wild Nine, and it, it's a platform game, from what I can remember. Uh, it, it looked really good. I mean, I, I got this ages ago when I was collecting PlayStation last time, man. And I really enjoyed it. It was a really colourful, fun game. So I was, I was glad. It's definitely got that PlayStation look about it. And I don't mean really to explain the PlayStation graphical look. But when it does like 2.5D or 3D, it just has that certain PlayStation look. Just like it's got that PlayStation sound. There's just something about the music in PlayStation games that's iconic. Um, it's a really, really fun title. So that's Wild Nine. Noisy motorbike going past. Okay, next one up is an absolute classic from one of my favourite franchises, which started on PlayStation. Medal of Honor Underground. Haven't got the first one yet, unfortunately, but I will be getting that because it's a fantastic game. I love the original. I like Underground. Underground's a really good game and a really decent sequel. I don't personally like it as much as the first game. I think the first game is better. But this game definitely has a lot to offer. It's got a lot bigger levels from what I can remember as well. A lot more scope involved in this one. I still prefer the first one. The first one is just, yeah, you can't beat the original. I like the atmosphere in the original two games as well. I like the way they did it with the sound. And like, when you in the first game, when you're walking through the woods and you can hear the Germans talking in the distance, having conversation, you can hear the dogs barking, the sounds of the night. Really, really well done. Uh, fantastic titles. I love Medal of Honor anyway. Medal of Honor is my favourite. Next up, we have one that I saw Owen the Boss who's 77 talking about recently Driver. Which was quite funny because he was talking about the initial bit where you have to drive around the car park and you have to do all the manoeuvres and he wasn't able to do it, he used to get his friends to do it. I did the same, my best mate used to do it every time for me. I, I, to this day, I cannot do that car park bit at the beginning. I find it impossible. I mean, it frustrates me. It's a real silly idea if you think about it. It's a major barrier to entry at the time when the game came out. If you didn't have a friend who could do it for you, it could really like put you off playing the game, which is a shame because once you get past that and you actually get into the actual game itself, it's a really, really fun title. Uh, lovely graphics as well. Uh, classic game driver is. Uh, unfortunately, they ruined the franchise when they got to number three, which is a real shame. But one and two, still really solid games, really fun. So then I've got this one, which is a must have Crash Bandicoot 3 Walt. My favourite Crash Bandicoot game. Absolutely love this. One and two are really solid and play exceptionally well. They still hold up exceptionally well these days. Number three, for me personally, was just the. The absolute pinnacle of the series. They really nailed it with this one. The graphics were even better. The la the levels were really, really fun. You know, you've got vehicles involved there. You've got right on the back of animals. I mean, it's just, it's just an absolutely spectacular title. 
the first three games, the original trilogy on PS1, without doubt, the best Crash Bandicoot games ever made. I was never a fan of those ones that were on PS2 and Xbox. I just don't think they work very well. And obviously they weren't made by Naughty Dog anyway, so that's probably why. But if Naughty Dog ever decide to go back to Crash, which I don't think they ever will now, but if they ever do come up with a concept, that would be absolutely brilliant. Okay, next one, I've got two games from one seller. Uh, got this one I had to have this because for me this is one of the games that is super iconic and really stands out in my memory from PlayStation days. It is of course Ridge Racer Type 4. I love the way I say of course. <laughs> this comes with a demo and they fit all in a really nice shape. I absolutely love this game. That, when I remember when I first got this and just I think I've said it a long time ago in one of my videos. That initial load up when you get the introduction and she climbs into the car and you've got that Ridge Racer music and that just really stuck with me. It blew my socks off at the time. Um, definitely my favourite Ridge Racer game. It's absolutely fantastic. Completely different style as well in presentation compared to the rest of the Ridge Racer games, which I like. Really makes it stand out quite a lot. Definitely open that Japanese style and it works a treat. Uh, absolutely superb game. That's uh, Ridge Racer Type 4. Okay, from the same setup, I also got an essential game that I have to have because I love the PlayStation port of this. It is, of course, Doom. I can't stop saying, of course. Uh, it is one of those jewel case ones as well. Now, unfortunately, I don't know what happened here. On the pictures, there was no cracks on this case. And the guy packaged these two games exceptionally well. He had a lot of bubble wrap, a lot of cardboard, stuck them in a box, did everything he could to protect the games. Unfortunately, there is a crack there. And I've checked the photographs, and the crack wasn't there when it was sold. So I assume somehow, I don't know how it got happened in the post, but I just can't understand how it happened because he packaged the games so well. Real pain in the ass because I don't know if you can get spares of these double cases or not. If anyone knows, Owen, if you know... Let me know because I'd like to replace the case on this one. Because uh, that will bug me. But yeah, I absolutely love Doom. I mean, that cover's just great. It's a little cheesy, but it does look absolutely brilliant. And, you know, everyone knows Doom and how great this game is. Absolutely fantastic first person shooter. One of the most important and iconic games in the genre. And holds up exceptionally well. I need to get Final Doom next because that's another great one. But I love the music on the PlayStation Doom. It's absolutely superb. Okay, and the last game I picked up recently was really good. I saw this going for a, a steal. Well, I say a steal. Compared to eBay, it was a steal <laughs> on Amazon. And it is Jackie Chan Stuntmaster. Now, this was a game. I just came across it the other night. And I was like, oh, I remember playing that when the PlayStation came out. And I really enjoyed it. And basically, it's a 3D scrolling uh, beat-em-up starring Jackie Chan. And you've got lots of platform action. You can use weapons. You can use mops. You can smack people around the face with a fish. It's really funny and really good, and you've got Jackie Chan. I don't know if it's actually Jackie Chan doing the voice or it's someone doing a Jackie Chan voice, but nonetheless, it sounds really cool. And it provides commentary as you're going through the game, and when you're getting beaten up, it's really fun. I was playing it the other night, and it still holds up exceptionally well. Really nice looking game, very PlayStation looking. Quite funny when you watch the cutscenes at the beginning because the introduction, it's got a really. I was quite surprised how much cinematics it actually had. It was like a modern game in terms of trying to portray, portray a story. But they've all got these weird PS1 uh, polygon faces. Like someone's just took a polygon and painted the face on the front of it. It looks hilarious. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a really, really solid game. And I got a great deal on this. I was on eBay. The only one I could find, some bloke wanted 25 quid for it. And I was like, I'm not paying that for a PS1 game. I'm not, I'm not like a hardcore PS1 collector, so I'm not going to be paying that. So I looked on Amazon and there was a guy selling it for 15 quid shipped. And I was like... That sounds alright, and his description was that it was in really good shape, etc. And I emailed him to make sure he post it correctly and package it correctly, which he was quite happy to oblige. And he, he wrote back to me within literally about five minutes and said, Yeah, no problem at all. And it came, and it's in really nice shape. I really like it. A lot of the black disc PlayStation games don't seem to get as scratched up as well. I don't know if that's the material they're made from or what it is, which is nice. And also, I prefer the black disc ones, they look cooler. Just like the blue disc PS2 games, they just look so cool. But yeah, really nice. And as I said, I prefer these cases. I mean, look, you get the PlayStation logo there as well. And the, the real thickness. I just I just prefer PlayStation Power games. They look better. Obviously, they don't run as fast and they're not as full screen like the US games. But they still run quite well. And uh, you get the really cool boxes. So there you go, guys. Those are the PS1 games I've got so far. There will be more. Obviously, I'm going to be picking them up. And I've got a list to work from so far. And I'm watching Owen's videos, The Boss of 77. Which is giving me inspiration. Because I'm really a bit clueless on a lot of the games. And... I played so many games back then, it's like the Commodore 64, trying on the Amiga, trying to remember all the games you played back then that you enjoyed, it's really quite difficult. And every now and again, a game like Jackie Chan would just come up and I'd be like, ah, Jackie Chan's Stuntmaster, I remember that one. So yeah, I was really tough to find that game. And yeah, I'm just going to work through the list and find more games and build it up and have a nice solid PlayStation collection to complement my Nintendo and my Mega Drive. 
thank you very much for watching guys i hope you enjoyed this video let me know down below what you think of these games uh, any memories you have with them as well would be really nice to hear so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up guys and thank you very much for watching i'll see you all again soon